Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back. After that praise, uh, we're going to celebrate communion together now as a fellowship. And I have just a few words to read from Isaiah 53. Words well known to us. We read here that surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Uh, what wonderful words. This is Isaiah speaking of the servant and the sufferings that he underwent. And that when he underwent those, people at first thought, well, he must be a very evil person to have done these things. But then they realise, and it's in this passage, that he took up our infirmities, that he wasn't punished for his own sins, but rather carried our sorrows. And yet we considered him stricken by God, but he was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. It's as though the rejection of Jesus took place that we might not be rejected, which of course is what the Christian gospel is all about. We can come before the Father in the name of Jesus, just as we are and who we are. You know, it makes me smile. Sheena and I have become so accustomed to these uh, times and occasions where we're recording and filming. Um, I say to Sheena in bed before we get out that we'll be going on set. I then say to Sheena to encourage her to get up and get on with it, that wardrobe and makeup are waiting for her. And then we're talking about learning our lines, etc., etc. But of course, these are the things that one does when one is performing, when one is trying to appear more or better than one is. But when we come before the Lord through the Je Lord Jesus Christ, when we come before God through his Son, there is no need for performance. There is no need to try and conceal our fundamental need, which through sin is to have forgiveness and to know healing and by his wounds to be healed again. And so we come as we are, repentant sinners. Now, to help us reflect a little on this, Sheena has chosen another one of Paul Tripp's great reflections on the rejection of Jesus. And I'm going to ask her to to read that, and then together, you and I, uh, we will eat and drink and celebrate the Lord's death. Sheena. This is called The Rejection of Rejection. Unthinkable, irrational, impossible to conceive. The Trinity torn asunder, the Son wrenched from his Father, salvation realised. I am the liar, I am the thief. I am the gossip, I am the rebel. I have wanted my own way in my own time at my appointed place. I have rebelled against your law and I have set up my own. I deny your kingship while building a kingdom of my own. I think my wisdom is wiser than yours. I think my plan is better than yours. I crave the sovereignty that only you should have. But you did the inconceivable. You accomplished the undoable. You stood in my place and you satisfied God's wrath. But in the process, the three in one was torn in two. In the process, the father did the most painful thing that he has ever done. He turned his back on you. You withstood this pain so that I would never have to. You took my rejection so that I would only ever have acceptance, so that I can rest assured. I can live in hope. I can enjoy true peace because I know that you are always with me. For long ago, on the cross, your rejection was, for me, the final rejection of rejection. Amen. Well, let's pray briefly before we eat and drink together. Our Heavenly Father, we feel this morning we're treading on holy ground. 
These things are not things that we can treat lightly or casually. And so therefore, Father, we want you to know we come with grateful hearts for the work that your Son has done on our behalf, for the rejection he endured that we might be accepted before you. We pray, Lord, that as we eat and drink, we might truly and in sincerity feed upon you in our hearts by faith. Therefore, Lord, be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we are about to eat the bread and you might have bread before you and you can join us in that. We know from scripture that on the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, our Lord took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we drink together. And so, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the realities that these emblems and symbols represent. The sacrifice of your Son for our sakes, that in trusting him, we might know that there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. We thank you for these things, and we eat and we drink, looking forward to that day, Lord Jesus, when you come again to receive your people. And we bless and thank you for the hope of these things at this time. And we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, now we're going to continue in praise together.